Okay, welcome to my first unboxing video. Um, I'm doing it because I haven't found any information on this other than TP-Link's website. This is the uh, TP-Link AC1200 EAP225 Outdoor model. Um, I have a project to use this for in uh, Canada, and apparently Although TP-Link said they were bringing it to Canada, they changed their mind apparently, and they may not be. However, I was able to order it from Amazon.com. And it didn't seem to have, could give me any trouble getting it across the border, and Amazon didn't complain, saying, not for Canada. So here it is, there's the box. There's information <clears throat> about their OMADA, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, centralized networking management software, which is pretty cool. It's free from TP-Link for all their uh, business class wireless devices. Basically it allows you to um, program, if you have two, six, eight, a hundred um, access points around a building, you can create maps and you can program them and, and uh, set up SSIDs and uh, passwords and security and everything from one console. It's pretty cool. All right, so let's get to the unboxing part. Cut. Let's get the top off here. Inside we've got your typical TP link packaging, this cardboard business here. An instruction booklet. Maybe we'll use that. Uh, public license notice. I'm sure we're going to read that later. <laughs> we've got what looks like some mounting hardware. Um, some drywall plugs or concrete plugs. I don't love these ones, but they do do the job. We've got some screws. I'm not sure what this little guy is for, but I'm sure it will become... Oh, it's kind of rubbery. Oh, it's probably to fill the hole to keep moisture out for outdoor mounting. Let's take that little guy out of there. What do we have here? Oh, look at that. Look at that cute little guy. That would be the PoE injector. PoE power over Ethernet basically powers a device through the Ethernet cable. And if you don't have a, a router that's capable of it, this is a pass-through injector. Oh, with more mounting screws and a mounting plate. Look at that. So you can mount that in your closet or somewhere, wherever your um, router is. And then what you do is you go from your router uh, to your LAN port. And then uh, this would be the PoE port, which would then go back to the actual uh, access point and you plug it in there and then it sends power through the Ethernet line. So if you're going to run this outdoor, which I'm going to, you don't have to... Wow, look how small that is. I was expecting it to be much larger. Wow, that is cool. That is sleek. you got your antennas. Look at that. This is like the access point of the future. Very cool looking. Look at that. Tennis thread on. Can I adjust them a little bit? That is cool. Look how sleek that is. Okay, so I'm going to assume this... Oh yeah, the cover comes off there. Oh, and look at tether so you can't lose the cover. Oh, this is a pet peeve as a child growing up that my toys, all the, all the battery covers always disappeared. That is great. I love that. So there you go. You've got one port. That provides power and Ethernet, PoE. And deep in there, if you can see it, there's a reset button deep in there. That's pretty cool. All right. And then we have a power cord for the PoE, which is probably really short, but that's fine because you can pretty much put it anywhere. The length, uh, you use the Ethernet cables. There we go. Plug that guy in there. What else do we have? <laughs> There's your pole mounting kit, <laughs> otherwise known as zip ties. So yeah, you would just press that against your pole and throw a couple of zip ties to these cracks and hold that to your pole. I think it's supposed to have a, oh yeah, there it is. And it has a wall mount kit. If you're not going on a pole, that would just screw to the wall. 
snaps in. A little release. Simple. It's a little light, but that guy is sleek. All right. Let's power it up. Okay. A couple of Ethernet cables here. I got a longer one for this demonstration. I'm going to take this Ethernet cable and plug it into a to a switch. Actually, no, I'm going to do it backwards. What I'm going to do is, because this guy needs to go down by the power bar. So, just to show you, I'll do it in a reverse setup. I'm going to plug the short cable in here. Look at that. But just for fun, close that up. Look at that. Oh yeah, that's what that little rubber guy is for. So. When you're actually mounting it outside, you'd want to squeeze that guy in there. I'm not going to do it right now because it's just temporary. But there we go. And then um, this goes to PoE port to give it power. This is going to go to LAN. And uh, I don't have power up here, so. I'm going to go grab an extension cord. Okay, got me an extension cord. Uh, we plug this guy in. We have a power indicator light. So there we go. We got Ethernet from my net local network into the PoE injector. PoE injector into the access point. Power lights on in theory. Oh, there we go. Look at that. That is cool. Look at that little side. Can you see that? A little green glowing light in there. This is a pretty sleek design. Good job, TP Link. Okay, so um, DHCP was assigned to the access point at 192.168.1.119. Default username is supposed to be admin and admin. <laughs> a new username. Admin, new password. I'm not telling you. <laughs> Can you see my keystrokes? Probably not. That's just temporary anyway. So, um, couldn't find this information online. Let me see if I can bring you a little closer. Probably should be using screen capture software for this, but I'm not so inclined to spend that time. Okay, so what do we got here? Uh, monitoring. Memory's at 49% already out of the box. That's interesting. Uh, let's go to network. So you've got your dynamic static uh, settings here. Um, not much to do in there. Under wireless. Let's see what you got. You got your uh, 2.4 gigahertz radio settings. Oh, that's because this tab is selected. So this is all going to be 2.4. One SSID. Um, pretty balanced, uh, basic stuff in here. Um, under 5 gigahertz settings, same thing. I'm not going to do any setup today because this is just uh, for testing purposes and checking out the firmware, which I was unable to find anywhere. Uh, portal. So this has like a Wi-Fi uh, cafe style portal where you can put in uh, terms of use and uh, uh, the name of your company here, and you can have it. I accept the terms and log in. Uh, local, pub, local portal, redirect, authentication, local password, so you can make your, your uh, customers and your coffee shop sign in with a password. Um, timeout, you can give them an hour of use or whatever you want, seven days. Custom, days, hours, months. Redirect. All right, that's cool. So you can redirect to your home page right after they log in. Lots of little bells and whistles in there. Let's go under uh, Mac filtering. You know, if you, uh, you should know what you're doing if you're in here, so I'm not gonna get into it. Uh, scheduler, that's pretty cool. I guess you can uh, schedule radio off, radio on. 
Again, if you don't want people using your Wi-Fi after hours, that's neat. QoS, this is what I was curious about, some QoS settings here. Uh, hmm. 5 gigahertz, same settings as 2.4. Data, data, minimum, maximum flow. I'm trying to figure out if there's a device-based QoS in here. I don't see that in this page. Mac filtering. Yeah, QoS. Anyway, that's for my own use. This And this video is to show you what's in here, so. Rogue AP detection. This is a feature I'm not too familiar with. I did read about it a while ago, but I don't remember what it's for. Monitoring, again, that's where it drops us when you log in. Shows you lots of the basic setup information from this view. Uh, SSIDs, this two setup, I think you can do 50 SSIDs or 25 in uh, 25 in uh, 2.4 and another 25 in 5 gigahertz. Uh, client information, of course there's nobody in there because it's a brand new setup. Let's check out management, system log, that's good to have, web server, management access, LED on off. <laughs> I guess if you don't want people to see the little LED glowing in the distance if it's outside, sure, you can turn that off, I'll leave it on for now. SSH, management VLAN, and SNMP, check out system, user accounts. I think this is for creating user accounts for the, for the um, uh, portal. Time settings, uh, we're not in Beijing. We are in uh, Eastern time, as well save that setting. Save, nice, okay. We're not doing any reboots right now. We're not doing a backup or restores, and I'll probably check to see what the latest firmware is. So uh, there it is. There's not a whole lot in here. And again, you can customize all this with the um, uh, the portal software called this stuff here. Omada, O-M-A-D-A controller software. You can, uh, again, you can configure all these settings across multiple TP-Link access points with one shot. For this particular setup I'm about to get into, it's really a one access point setup, so I'm not going to use the software. Um, I'm going to get, try and get one more thing in this video, which is a bit of a range test. Be right back. Okay, let's do a little range test. I'm going to go into wireless, and I'm going to change um, an SSID. Uh, can we add one? Wireless settings. Let's do 2.4 first. Uh, let's enable uh, advanced. Add. There it is. Add. All right. Um, SSID test 2.4. Okay. And let's go into 5 gigahertz and go add, let's just call this test 5. And save that? No, well that's in here, so that's saved. Okay. Let's go over to my uh, Wi-Fi analyzer. Let's see if we can find, there they are. Test. Let's start with five gigahertz. Some sound. Okay. So obviously, antenna, analyzer. So this particular room I'm working in is 130 feet approximately. Let's start walking. Okay. Probably about 60 feet. Still good. 100 feet. Oh, <laughs> phone went to sleep. Okay, 
far end of the room. Five gigahertz, wow. Not bad. Can you see the other end of the room? That's impressive. We are inside. Let's try uh, 2.4. Interesting. I would have thought that 2.4 would have been a little stronger at this distance. Back to five. Not bad. The room, as I said, is about 130 feet, which is about um, 40 meters. I'll actually be setting this up in a marina, which is going to be all outside, but the marina is in the downtown core, so the marina. Um, try that again, 2.5, sorry, 5 gigahertz, and 2.4, a tad stronger. Marine is outside um, where I'm going to be setting this up, but it's in the downtown core. So there's lots of um, uh, Wi-Fi interference. But um, what I'll do is I'll do another video on an outdoor test of the TP-Link EAP-225 Outdoor. Uh, thanks, and I hope this helps. Okay, so to be fair, I figured I'd give this uh, TP-Link EAP-225 <coughs> TP e TP EAP Outdoor a proper outdoor test. So, I've got it temporarily powered up with no Ethernet, but Wi-Fi is functioning. As you can see, I'm connected here on the uh, 5, can you see that? On the 5 gigahertz frequency, full strength, obviously, because I'm 6 inches away from it. i got my step counter running on the same screen, and we're going to go for a walk through this park and see how far we get. The step counter is a little delayed. It'll catch up. It's counting in meters. We're going to go to the end of the park. See how far we get. The last test was inside. And uh, wow. Oh. Little delayed reaction there. So 50 meters were down to half there. Let's switch it up to 2.4. 48 meters. I guess that's pretty good if you think about it. 48 meters. Uh, well, it is what it is. I'm not sure how that relates to anything because I haven't spent a lot of time testing outdoor access points and also have to keep in mind that I'm using a phone for the testing and the antenna in this phone is much smaller than the antennas you'll find in a laptop. It seems to also make a difference based on which way I'm facing. 2.4 still not too bad. Okay, 60 meters. And we're down to half. Let's keep going. So we're at 70, oh, screen timed out. 70 meters. And that would probably still work, but wouldn't be so much fun. Well, let's go check the, oops. Isn't that it? Five. I'd say that you wouldn't want to push this more than 70 meters. 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. 
Although that is a pretty big distance. Although funny enough, I turned around and the signal strength jumped up. It's going to make a big difference of guess which way the phone is pointing. And actually when I'm standing this way, with my back to the antenna, the signal's passing through me technically. It does make a big difference. Look at that. Let me face backwards. Yeah. Let's walk backwards. Again, I'm not an expert in this. Pretty knowledgeable tech guy, but... And I haven't done this before. I'm learning this with you. Look at that. When I'm facing the antenna, I'm now at 85 meters. And I'm still in the green. Can I take a few more paces? 90 meters, 5, giga, five gigahertz band. Oops. Phone keeps timing out. That's still usable. Let's go back and check the 2.4. 2.4. No, it's good. I'm running in a park. And, uh, I'm going to start going downhill. Ninety meters. Oh! Let's check five gigahertz again. Five. At probably over 90 meters. I'm at the far end of the park and we have a usable signal. I would say that is quite impressive. Any questions or comments please feel free to post. Again, any feedback is welcome, just don't be harsh about it. And I hope uh, you learned something from this video. Thanks.